Hey everyone, I hope that you have been enjoying your Zbrush Summit 2020. My name is Pablo Munoz Gomez. I'm a 3D concept and character artist, and I've been using Zbrush to create creatures, concepts, and you know all sorts of things for the past 10 years or a little bit over 10 years. And in the in the last few years, it has been uh, an instrumental part of my of my creative process. So today I have a tip on how to detail and how to um, enhance the look and feel of your drapery or cloth or um, anything that you do in a simulation with the new settings and the new tools from Zbrush 2021. So what I got here is just a simple sphere. I'm going to go into solo mode. A simple sphere and a simple plane. Uh, the plane I had subdivided that three times. So in the plane itself, I have 16,000 polygons. So pretty decent for a simulation, um, not too detailed. But the, the actual tip that I'm going to give you is using some of the tools that have been in Zbrush for a very long time. And I don't see a lot of people using it. And I just found it to be an incredibly powerful tool or an additional tool um, that you can combine with the new settings or the new the new features like um, dynamics. So we're going to start with the dynamics very quickly. I'm not going to um, dwell too much on those. And then I'm going to show you the, the tip. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the dynamic palette. Set it on the right hand side, actually, so you can see better. And let me get rid of a few palettes here. All right. So here we have the dynamics palette. Um, these are the default settings. I haven't touched anything, just added the, the plane and subdivided. So if I run the simulation right now, this is going to go through the, the sphere because I haven't told ZBrush that I want to consider this volume in the simulation. So I'm going to undo that. And by the way, I have obviously the, the plane selected. All I'm going to do is click on the collision volume to enable it. So once I do that, Sirius is going to look at whatever is visible in the scene, in this case, um, the sphere, obviously, and it's going to remember that volume. So when I run the simulation the next time, uh, it's going to conform to that volume or, or react to that volume. So just by enabling this, I'm going to go ahead and click on Run Simulation. And now we have a pretty cool deformation for this for this piece. Now, one, one thing that I would like you to pay attention to, I'm going to stop the simulation by clicking on the Run Simulation thing. Um, and the reason I left the polyframe enable is so you can see the stretchiness of the polygons, right? And that that happens because of the amount of simulation uh, iterations that I have right now. I have a hundred, and the kind of like combination of those settings with the gravity uh, setting, which is set to to ten. So let's go ahead and let me turn off the floor, and I'm gonna drop. I'm going to do a screenshot here. By the way, if you don't know about the, the screenshots in Zero, you can hold Shift S, and that basically drops an, an image on the canvas. So I, this is my 3D object, and this one on the left, you know, left-hand side at the bottom is just a, a screenshot of it. Um, but allows you to compare the two. So I'm going to undo that, and now I'm going to reduce the gravity strength just a bit, but I'm going to increase my iterations to let's say 300. So by increasing this number, uh, Sirius has enough time to catch up with those settings before the gravity ends up pulling all of this um, in a way. So I'm going to run the simulation. So it's going to take a little bit longer, but hopefully you can see that there is less stretchiness, less deformation on, on those polygons. So uh, we can have a, a more consistent approach, right? Or a more consistent reaction of that cloth. All right. So I'm going to stop the simulation there. Oops. There we go. So undo that. All right, and I'm going to hold Control and N to clear that, that screenshot. And let's turn off the polyframe. And I'm going to open up the tool palette. Right. So yeah, we have two, two sub tools. Now this one is kind of like our cloth, uh, which is looking pretty good. I forgot to turn on the self collision. So that's why we have this intersection here. Uh, so let's go ahead and undo that. Go back to dynamics. I'm going to click on self collision, give it a value of two. And let's do that again. And basically, uh, after the, the simulation is run, um, what I want to do is using use the cloth hook, I think it's called. I, can, I have to check the cloth hook to move it around and you know give it a bit more shape. And I know this is a pretty simple uh, scene, but the, the tip or what I want to share with you guys today is that once you have run the simulation, don't expect it to be perfect, right? Um, it's going to give you a great starting point, a great uh, base to, to begin the process of sculpting. But um, you shouldn't expect that the simulation is going to be perfect from the, from the get-go. So I'm going to stop the simulation now. OK. So now you see there's no self-collision. That's pretty cool. 
And now I can go ahead and maybe polish it a little bit. So I'm going to go to the deformation palette. And in the polish, I'm going to set it to 2. So that clears a, a bit of those. Uh, maybe it is too much. Set it to 1. Yeah, I think that, that works. So I'm going to click on the brush palette, drop that here on the right. And I'm going to select the the cloth hook, right? So this one right here. Okay. So this one is like a move brush, but it reacts to you know the dynamics or it uses dynamics. So if I click and drag, you can do this sort of thing, which is pretty cool. Right? I'm gonna go to the dynamics, and there are two options that you can or two ways that you can use the, the move brush or the the cloth brushes really um, with zero. So one is when you have the on brush enabled. Basically, the effect is limited to just that range of the of the size of the brush. So you see, even though I move those things in here, this area is untouched. Uh, or if I turn this off, everything is going to be uh, the effect will be propagated to the entire cloth. So now I can pull this area like so, and everything else is going to sort of follow and and move with it, right? So in this case, this is what I want to do: is I want to react, I want to maintain the volume of the of the cloth. And let's say I just push this like so. And obviously you can tweak the, the influence and the and the C intensity of this brush, but I just want to make like a very interesting drapery effect in here. Right? And if you think that maybe these um, these wrinkles are too too small or too thick, what you can do is change the firmness of the material, right? Um, so if you want this to be linen or silk, uh, you might want to have less firmness so that when you start moving uh, things around, there it generates, Osiris generates a smaller wrinkle. So to give you an example, if I set it to one and do this, I'm going to get a bunch of like really tiny wrinkles. Whereas if I set this to five or six, when I move this, I'm going to get hardly any any wrinkles uh, or the wrinkles or faults would be uh, quite thick like if it's some kind of leather or, or wool or something like that you'll see it's a pretty big wrinkle right uh, so that's all all good i think i'm happy with this just as a as a demo <laughs> a demo scene uh, i'm gonna go ahead and subdivide this a couple more times so divide once twice and i'm just gonna use this smooth brush very quickly maybe on the subdivision level four Maybe a bit more, just to soften it, right? All right. So, as a starting point, this is a really cool, right? But you can further enhance this and add more details in a variety of ways. So, the simplest thing would be to select this standard brush, maybe. So, I'm gonna press B S T again, B S T, select the standard brush, and you can start adding. Maybe some some tension here, and this is how I would approach this. I would start with the simulation to give me a, a really a really fantastic head start, and then I can start using the sculpting brushes to refine some of these wrinkles. Now this is all you know great, uh, but the tip that I actually want to give you is using the 2.5D uh, tools in Zeros, and that's what I said, they, they have been in, in Zeros for a long time. So uh, I'm going to show you how to create a custom brush that you can use to, to detail these type of things or anything really, uh, but you'll see it's pretty fun to actually build your own brushes and the, the result is, is fantastic. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch to 2.5D, but before I'm going to create a a document that is a square document of 1024 by 1024. So I'm going to drop my document here again, and I'm going to turn off the proportional so that I can actually make it square 1024, 1024, and I'm going to resize. Click on yes. I'm going to clear the canvas. Control N. Click and drag, and enter edit mode. All right. So we're back. Um, you might not see much of a difference, so what I'll do so that you can see what I'm doing is I'm going to go to the document palette and I'm going to change the background to a black color. Just clicking from that swatch, this, so and also click on the AA half, right? So now you see the, the size of the document is this square, right? Um, this is fear and this scene doesn't really matter because we're going to move that out of the way anyway. 
So the next step or the next thing is to jump from this 3D mode that I can rotate around to 2.5D, right? So I'm gonna get out of edit, right? And it's gonna ask me, um, Siri is gonna ask me if I wanna move to 2.5D, right? So I'm gonna click on switch. And again, I'm gonna hold control and N to clear my canvas. And now I'm gonna click on the thumbnail from the tool palette. And I'm, I can use any of these tools here in the 2.5D. I'm gonna go ahead and select this sphere brush. And I'm just gonna paint some sort of wrinkles, right? And this is just painting on, a, on an empty canvas. And this is not 3D, right? This is just maybe with a larger brush size. So you do this faster. So I can use, uh, you know, references and have a look at different images to, to get that pattern right. But I sort of like have an idea of what I'm going for. But as you can see, I'm painting with the, obviously with the magic of the pixel in zero. So I have depth and I have material information and all of that, but this is 2.5D, right? It's not a 3D object or anything like that. And it's pretty simple like Photoshop, right? Just painting things like this. So this is the first step. The second step would be to select something like the smudge uh, tool. And as, it, as the name says, I can smudge things like so. And this allows me to simplify it you know, the transition between these shapes. I'm just doing doing this very quickly, but you know, you can spend more time doing this. Um, although you don't need to, right? All right, something like this. And you sort of see, hopefully what I'm, what I'm getting at with this, um, you get this really nice effect and very faded um, set of wrinkles that then you can extract and apply it to the 3D mesh. So this is the second step to smudge it. Or you don't have to, but I think it's a good a good step. Uh, the next step would be to use the MRCG grabber. So this one right here. So this one is going to capture material information, lighting everything, and it's going to create a texture. It's going to create an alpha everything. So all I have to do is from the center, click and drag, right? And I'm going to capture in this square basically. I'm going to capture that alpha. If you press the shift key, you can actually uh, constrain this to a um, to a square size and while you're holding shift as well um, as dragging you can press the space bar to move this a little bit um, i think i'm gonna do it like that let go and as soon as you do that you see it creates an alpha that's what i have here and it creates a texture i think i cropped it a little bit weird let me just do it again there we go much better right so we have this alpha. Now, this is just one alpha, the first alpha. You can go ahead and do this multiple times. So I can hold Control and N to clear my canvas, go through the same process. So maybe this time I'm gonna do some sort of pinching effect for a corner of the, you know, of the of the cloth, right? Something like this. And you can do all of these with the new dynamics and the brushes. It's just that this one is, you know, just for detailing. Um, I'm going to do the same thing, smudging. And this is obviously not a tool just to, to create these wrinkles. You can use this for anything that you want. I um, just want to show you the, the process because it's, it's pretty fun. And it's also very powerful. <laughs> all right. So we have that, that sort of pinch. Um, if you want to remove some parts, you can go to the eraser and then just erase that, right? And then do the same thing. Use the, whoops, that one. Grab that and then you have another alpha, great. So all I have to do now is clear this now, go to the document palette, which I have here. Um, I'm going to toggle this uh, auto fit for the, the entire width of my, of my canvas or my document. Click on new document. And now I can click and drag. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. I want to select my object actually, drag that in, enter in edit mode. And if I go to my alpha palette, I should have all the alphas that I created. So this one is two, right? And I have my standard brush, right? The one that I just use to add these details. So all I have to do really is change my, my stroke and my alpha type. So I'm going to click on the stroke palette. Uh, you won't see this because I have the camera. So let me, where's the stroke palette here? And I'm gonna drop that in here as well. So I'm gonna change this stroke to drag rect. So now I can click and drag to add an instance of that brush. And of course the alpha, I'm gonna select this alpha and I can click and drag 
and there you go. You have pretty cool additional wrinkles to, to detail. But there you have it, a pretty simple tip. Uh, hopefully it has given you some ideas. This is a tool that has been in Zbrush for a long time. And with the new additions like the Dynamics, uh, the Dynamic Palette, in combination with these other tools, you can generate something that looks really, really cool, really complex in, in virtually no time. All right, so I'm going to leave it here. Enjoy the rest of your summit.